you indicated uh, that the United States might consider to withdraw the special status uh, for uh, Hong Kong. Um, which measures could you imagine regarding trade, travel, currency exchange, um, etc.? Will Hong Kong be treated like all other Chinese cities? Well, it appears that that's China's intention. And I always, when I hear my European counterparts say, uh, well, we don't want to choose, I always remind them the other side gets to choose too. So when you ask, will Hong Kong be treated as any other Chinese city? It will be to the extent that the Chinese cho choose to treat it that way. Look, uh, I haven't seen what happened overnight, um, but the Chinese Communist Party appeared intent on passing a national security law that will deny significant amount of freedoms that the Chinese Communist Party had promised to the people of Hong Kong would last 50 years. There are a set of elections scheduled for September. We should all watch closely. That's not that far off now. We should all watch very closely where those elections are permitted to take place in a free and fair fashion. To the extent those elections are delayed, postponed, canceled, or somehow not treated in a way that is fair and open, I think that will tell us everything we need to know about the Chinese Communist Party's intentions with respect to freedom in Hong Kong. President Trump, as far as policy, President Trump's made very, very clear. Uh, to the extent that the Chinese Communist Party treats Hong Kong as it, as it does uh, uh, Shenzhen and Shanghai, we will treat them the same. We have many agreements that are unique between the United States and Hong Kong, separate and different from uh, those we have with uh, Beijing. Uh, we will move away from every one of those. And then second, the president's made clear too, we have a responsibility to hold accountable those inside of China who failed to live up to those agreements as well. And so we are working our way through a decision-making process to determine who those decision makers were and what the appropriate uh, mechanism is to hold them accountable. Uh, we, we, we don't want to harm the people of Hong Kong. They're the freedom loving people that we aim to, uh, to get the benefit of the bargain they made with the United Kingdom. But to the extent the Chinese Communist Party denies that, we're responsible to hold the relevant parties accountable. But what will happen uh, if uh, the security law leads to imprisonment of democracy activists, uh, etc., uh, in the autumn? What could you imagine to do? You know, Anders, I, I just don't want to get into particular decisions. I, I don't want to foreclose anything that the president may choose to do or not to do. We're still working our way through that process. Uh, two things to think about, though. One is, what will the people of Hong Kong do? We, we've watched them. They, they've simply asked for the mainland Chinese to live up to the commitments that were made. We're on year 27 of a 50-year deal. You wouldn't take that. You signed up for deal for 50 years. Somebody walks away at the halfway point. You'd you'd not be happier. You're 23, I guess it is. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how the people of Hong Kong respond. And frankly, the people, the freedom loving people in the mainland as well, they're watching too. Never forget that while we see a unitary face from the Chinese Communist Party, that that billion and a half people also have ideas that are different and uh, may well be watching how this transpires as well. I know the people of Taiwan are certainly watching how this transpires. Uh, and second, as for how the United States will respond, I'll, I, I want to leave I want to leave open the range of possibilities. But the president has made clear, uh, to the extent Hong Kong is treated by the Chinese Communist Party as just another piece of mainland China, there's no reason for the United States to treat them any differently as well. And we have a law that requires that as well. 